Hello, my name is Paul Lima, freelance writer and writing trainer. I've been writing for over 30 years, and I've been training for about 20 years. You can find out more about me on my website, www.paullima.com. That's www.paullima.com. Today's webinar is for freelance writers who want to tackle the periodical market, newspapers and magazines, and even some online sites. We're going to focus on the query letter. The query letter is your calling card. It helps you sell your article idea to the right editor at the right publication. Before you write your query letter, you need an article idea. And of course, once you write your query letter, you have to send it to the right editor at the right publication. That means you have work to do. You have to develop or come up with the idea that you want to sell. You have to determine who your target audience would be interested in this idea. Then you have to find publications that appeal to that target audience. Once you've found a publication or several publications, you have to find the editor's name at the publication and, of course, the editor's contact information. Then, of course, once you've done that, you have to write your query letter and you have to send it or email it to the editor. And if you haven't heard back from the editor in two or three or four weeks, you may have to follow up. But today, we're going to focus on the structure of the query letter, the structure of the content you would include in your query letter. You might not feel that you are in sales, but the fact is your query letter should work just like a sales or promotional letter does. In other words, it should be structured to AIAA. That's capture attention, hold interest, influence attitude, and of course, call for action. To capture attention, the first paragraph or two of your query letter should be as well written as the article you are proposing. That captures the attention of the editor. What you want is the editor to be reading this and thinking, I can see this idea in my publication. To hold interest, you have to tell the editor who you would interview for the article. You also should tell the editor why this particular idea would appeal to the target audience, target market, or the readers of the publication. It should be self-evident. However, it helps if you re reinforce that fact. To influence attitude, you want to make sure your writing is as good as the writing of the article would be. In other words, you want the editor to be thinking, wow, I could see this person writing an article based on this idea for my publication. So your writing needs to be stellar. And of course, you want to call for action. In a query letter, it should be as simple as, would you be interested in an article on this idea? Let the editor answer yes or no. And of course, if you don't hear back from the editor in two, three, or four weeks, you may need to follow up on your query letter. How long do you wait? It really depends on the publication. Is it a daily, a weekly, a monthly? That should influence how long you wait before you follow up with the editor. So that's the basic structure of the query letter. However, let me give you a couple of, of examples. I'd like to read to you a query letter from the book, Everything You Wanted to Know About Freelance Writing. It's available through my website, www.paullima.com. I'm doing an interview on the phone. Come in and wave hi, then get a snack and start your homework. The note is on the kitchen counter where my daughter Jennifer will see it when she comes home from school. She peeks in the door, waves, and leaves. Half an hour later, I check on her. I have completed my interview with the company CEO who didn't have a clue about what just happened. It was easy to achieve my goal this time, but it wasn't always that way. What you just heard was the opening of a query letter that pitched an idea working at home with children to an editor of an appropriate publication. Can you hear how that opening might actually be the lead of the article. That's how good the opening of your query letter should be. You want the editor to say, wow, I could see that article in my publication. 
Also, did you notice the last line of the lead or opening of this query letter? It was easy to achieve my goal this time, but it wasn't always that way. That tells the editor that your article starts with a problem and presents the reader with a solution. Now, if this is a problem some of the readers of this publication have, the editor is going to say, wow, my readers have that problem. You've got a solution to it. I want to read more. And that captures the attention of the editor. If you can get the editor to say, I want to read more, that's very cool. Then you segue out of that, give some background information, tell the editor who you might be interviewing for the article, saying that it's based on your personal experience, whatever the case may be, and that holds the editor's interest. You call for action. Would you be interested in an article on this idea? And then you end the query letter with a brief bio about yourself. It really doesn't have to be more than a couple of lines. If you've got some sample articles on your website, you can include your website address so that the editor, editor can read some of your sample articles. It could be a website address or a blog. Point the editors to specific articles you would like the editor to read. If you don't have a blog or a website, you can include a couple of samples. And if you don't have any samples, then you want your query letter to be absolutely stellar so the ed editor says to him or herself, wow, this person can write. That's the query letter in a nutshell. Let me give you another sample query letter. There's a subject line called, and it goes, query, cell phone 911 issues. So presumably, this query letter is targeted at an editor of a publication that would be interested in cell phones and or 911. Here's the opening. The woman in the torn red dress with frazzled red hair appeared dazed and confused as she tried to cross Highway 400 just north of Black Creek, Creek Drive on a Sunday, Saturday morning. Traveling north at 110 kilometers per hour, I zoomed right past her. If I had stopped suddenly or veered off the highway to, to help, I would have caused a major accident. Instead, I reached for my cell phone and called 911. So there's the opening of the query letter. Notice how it fulfills the promise of the subject line, and in fact, is something that you might read in a newspaper or magazine. The query letter opening is as strong as the lead of the article. The query letter continues. The emergency operator listened politely, confirmed it was a lady in red crossing the northbound lanes of Highway uh, 400 near Black Creek Drive, and told me the police had been dispatched. In other words, I was not the first driver to call 911. Again, listen to that last line. In other words, I was not the first driver to call 911. Let's go back to the subject line, cell phone 911 issues. The query letter continues. If you think you hear sirens blaring a lot in this city, it's probably because sirens blare, blare frequently in Toronto. Torontonians call 911 anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 times a day, or over 1 million times a year. That line's important. We have how many times a day Torontonians call, which seems like a lot, but let's say it's over 1 million times a year. 1 million is a significant number. Presumably, the editor's going, wow, I didn't know that. And if you can get an editor to go, wow, I didn't know something, in other words, you've informed the editor of an issue, then the editor is going to be thinking, my readers don't know that. I want this article so that my readers learn something. Again, the query letters continue. About 45 to 50 percent of the calls are made from cellular phones. If we go back to the subject line, cell phone 911 issues, we've just established that about half the phone calls to 911 are made from cellular phones. The query letter continues. Of those, almost 100 calls a day are made by accident when the keypad of a cell phone in a purse, briefcase, or pocket comes in contact with an object or some part of the human anatomy and speed dials 911. And there you have it. There's our cell phone issue. All these accidental calls to 911. 
This is particularly irritating for 911 operators as they have to stay with such calls until they can confirm that the calls have been made accidentally or until they are sure there is no emergency in progress. So you can see these accidental 911 calls, and I'm talking, not reading from the query letter now, these accidental 911 calls ca cause problems for the 911 operators. Then the query letter asks for action. Would you be interested in an article that delves into the problems related to 911 and cell phones? For this article, I can relate my 911 call experience, talk to at least one other person who has called 911 on a cell phone, an interview gives a contact name, emergency 911 coordinator for Toronto Police Services. If you are interested in the article, email me or call, and then there's a phone number. So we've told the editor who we will talk to in order to make this article complete. So we've got an attention-grabbing opening. We hold the editor's interest, give some facts, figures, some pertinent information, and we make the editor say, wow, I could see my readers being interested in this article. We ask for action, tell the editor who will be interested in interviewing, who we will interview, and then say to the editor, if you're interested, here's how to contact me. That is your basic query letter. So when you write your query letters, you want to AIAA, capture attention, hold interest, influence attitude, and call for action. This and more information is available and everything you wanted to know about freelance writing. It's one of several books I've written on business writing, writing articles, and the business of freelance writing. The books are available through my website www.paulima.com. In addition, if I am allowed a short commercial message, I am available for coaching and training. You can find out all of that information on my website or feel free to contact me from my website and uh, ask me any questions that you may have. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and that you found it informative and interesting and it and that it helps you when you sit down to pitch your idea, in other words, write your query letter to editors of various publications.